Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrafil enbiyai vel mursalin. Muhammedun Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem. Tasliman kafiran kafiran. Fa ma badu. My brothers and sisters, the word about our aqidah regarding the sahaba of Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. I quote from the uh, aqidatu tahawiyya. And uh, so let's begin with that. We love the companions of the Messenger of Allah, the Sahaba of Rasulullah but we do not go to excess in our love for any one individual among them, nor do we disown any of them. We hate anyone who hates them or does not speak well of them and we only speak well of them. Love of them is a part of Islam, part of belief and part of excellent behavior while hatred of the Sahaba is kufr and hypocrisy, nifaq and disbelief and rebellion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we confirm. وَنُثَبِّتُ الْخِلَافَةَ بَعْدَ النَّبِيِّ أَوَّلًا لِأَبِي بَكَرْ صِدِّيقْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ تَفْضِيلًا وَتَقْدِيمًا عَلَى جَمْعِ الْأُمَّةِ ثم لعمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه ثم لعثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه ثم لعلي علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه وكرم الله وجهه رضوان الله عليهم أجمعين وهم الخلفاء الراشدون والأئمة المهديون الذين خضوا بالحق we confirm that after the death of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, Rasulullah sallam, the Khilafah went first to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, thus proving his excellence and superiority over the rest of the Muslims. Then to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, then to Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, and then to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, then for a very short time to his son Hassan ibn Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhuma. These are the Khulafa al-Rashidah. But since uh, the Khilafa of Hassan radiallahu anhu was so short, when we mention Khulafa al-Rashidah, we usually mean the first four only, even though we include him in the, re in the list of those we consider to be rightly guided al-Rashidun. وَإِنَّ وَإِنَّ الْعَشَرَةَ الَّذِينَ سَمَّاهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَشْحَدُ لَهُمْ بِالْجَنَّةِ كَمَا شَهِدَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَقَوْلُهُ الْحَقُّ وَهُمْ أَبُو بَكْرٍ وَعُمُرُ وَعُثْمَانُ وَعَلِيُ وَطَلْحَةُ وَالزُّبَيْرُ وَسَعَدُ بْنُ وَسَعَدُ وَسَعِيدُ بْنُ عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَنِ بْنُ عَوْفٍ وأبو عبيدة ابن الجراح وهو أمين هذه الأمة رضوان الله عليه مجمعين. We bear witness that the ten who were named by the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and who were promised Jannah by him will be in Jannah as the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم whose word is truth bore witness that they would be and the ten are Abu Bakr, Umar, Osman, Ali, Talha. Zubair, Sa'ad bin Mu'ad, Sa'ad bin Zaid, uh, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, and Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, whose title is Aminul Ummah, radiyallahu anhum ajma'in. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنَ الْقَوْلَ فِي أَصْحَابِ النَّبِيِّ وَأَزْوَاجِهِ وَذُرِّيَاتِهِ فَقَدْ بَرِيَا مِنَ النِّفَاقِ Anyone who speaks well of the Sahaba of Rasulullah and his wives and offspring who are all pure and untainted by any impurity is free from the, from the accusation of hypocrisy and vice versa, which means that anyone who uh, speaks ill of the Sahaba of Rasulullah uh, or curses them or abuses them or any of his wives or any of his offspring, any of his children, then this person is a, uh, is a hypocrite. 
Our belief about the Sahaba is central to our Akhida. We received the Quran through them. We learned the Ahadith of Nabawiyya, the Ahadith of Rasulullah through them. They are the ones who told us about the life of Rasulullah his blessed Sirah. The communi they communicated to us his rulings on various matters with the permission of Rasulullah They ruled on various matters um, with the permission of Rasulullah uh, which comprise for us the Sharia of Islam. We consider all the Sahaba to be thiqa, which is truthful and reliable in, the, in their narration of the Quran and the Hadith. We take their rulings as rulings to be obeyed. We take their understanding of Arabic, the language of the Quran and the Hadith, as the correct understanding and their understanding of the teachings of Rasulullah to be the correct understanding. In both these matters, if there is a dispute in understanding in later generations, our scholars have always referred to the understanding of the Sahaba. Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in may Allah be pleased with all of them, Allah was pleased with all of them as the benchmark. The Sahaba are the only people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised Jannah to individually and collectively and for whom not only did he promise forgiveness, but he declared that he was pleased with them and honored them by declaring that they were pleased with him. He said, Radiallahu anhum, Allah was pleased with them about the Sahaba, waradu'an, and they are pleased with him, Jalla Jalaluhu, and therefore we also declare the same that Allah was pleased with the Sahaba, this term radiallahu anhu or radiallahu anhum as, as plural and radiallahu anha as singular female, singular feminine, we use only for the Sahaba because it is a statement which is in the past tense, meaning Allah was pleased. It's a definitive statement and obviously such a statement needs Dalil needs evidence, needs proof. It is not a wish. It is not a dua. We are saying Allah was pleased with this person. And we can only say that about the person who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he was pleased with. This is the difference between radiallahu anhu and rahmatullah alayhi. Rahmatullah alayhi is a dua. Rahmatullah alayhi is a wish. It is a desire, our desire. May Allah be pleased. May Allah have mercy. Rahmatullah Ali, may Allah's mercy be on that person. This can be said about any any Muslim, any Muslim who has died, a uh, man or woman, we can say this. Rahmatullah Ali, I can say that about my father, I can say that about my mother, and I I hope this will be true uh, for them, inshallah, that Allah will have mercy on them. But I cannot say my father, radiallahu anhu, it would be completely and totally incorrect and ignorant of me to say that because Allah did not say, that he is pleased or he was pleased with my father. But I can say and I should say it is the right of the Sahabi, any of the Sahaba of Rasulullah that I must say if it's a man, radiallahu anhu, if it's a woman, radiallahu anha, and if it is, uh, I'm speaking about them collectively, then radiallahu anhu. I won't... Uh, uh, and if it is two, meaning the Sahabi, who is the son of another Sahabi, we say radiallahu anhuma, meaning with both of them. That's the the Arabic. Uh, uh, the Arabic has has singular. It has its name. It is two, and then it has plural, which is three and more. And now, um, so therefore, as I said, we this is the reason why it is incorrect to use this phrase radiallahu anhu, radiallahu anha, radiallahu anhuma, radiallahu anhum. Uh, to use any of these phrases for anyone other than Sahaba as it is a term that is used by Allah only for them and it is in the past tense and so nobody has the authority to use it for anyone other than a Sahabi or Sahabiya of Rasulullah Sallallahu That's a special honor for the Sahaba alone and it is not uh, for anyone else to use this term. Uh, we declare our own respect for the Sahaba by saying radiallahu anhu for a male, radiallahu anha for a woman, 
radiyallahu anhuma where we mention two sahaba or a sahabi or sahabiya whose father was also a sahabi or sahabiya of Rasulullah sallam and radiyallahu anhum or radiyallahu anhum ajma'een when we mention three or more of them. Those who simply take the name of a sahabi without adding Rasul radiyallahu anhu or radiyallahu anha who just say Abu Bakr said this and Omar said this and so on and we see a lot of these kinds of uh, very uh, ignorant and uh, disrespectful way of addressing the Sahaba. May Allah have mercy on the people who do that. They should correct themselves. So those who simply take the name of the Sahabi without adding radiallahu anhu wa radiallahu anha and so forth demonstrate an ignorance of the basic principles of this deen and the lack of adab and lack of respect that is due to the Sahaba. Now imagine the fate of those who hate and curse the Sahaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the Sahaba and stated that he forgave them. He promised them Jannah. He also praised their qualities and mentioned these qualities. The purpose of our study is to try to inculcate a love for the Sahaba in our hearts so that we love those who Rasulullah loved and to try and we try to be um, as much like them as possible uh, so that we qualify to be among the list of people who Rasulullah uh, loved. So let me quote some of the ayat in this respect. You now uh, perhaps the greatest of these is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, declared uh, in absolutely unequivocal uh, in unequivocal terms where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُحَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعْهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوًا وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي تَحْتَهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in uh, Surah Al-Tawbah ayah number 100 and the first to lead, Sabihun al awwalun the first of the first, the people who won the race, and the first to lead the way of the Muhajireen and the Ansar, the, the emigrants and the helpers, and those who followed them in goodness. Allah is well pleased with them, and they are well pleased with Him, Jalla Jalaluhu. And he has made ready for them gardens underneath which rivers flow, wherein they will abide and stay forever. That is supreme triumph. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, then mentioned specifically, especially, one of the greatest events in the seerah, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. And the pledge of allegiance that the Sahaba Ridwanullahi gave to Rasulullah to obey him without question and do whatever he commanded them to do and to lay down their lives for that if required. After that pledge, there was actually no battle, and the Sahaba were not put to any risk at all. But the pledge itself was a graduation of faith. And as a reward of which uh, they were promised Jannah. Yeah, this is the, uh, the benefit and the power of obedience. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all obedient to him and to be true followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and this is so important. See the Arabic of the Allah said, Laqad, indeed. This is a, uh, an emphasizer emphatic way of saying it لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَاعِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَا مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا In Surah Al-Fatih Allah said indeed <coughs> Allah was pleased with the believers who were there all the Sahaba who were there in Hudaybiyah uh, except there was one person who, was, who stayed away and that's it, we'll come to that. So indeed, Allah was pleased with the believers when they gave their bayah, they gave their pledge to you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, under the tree. He knew what was in their hearts 
and he sent down a sakina, calmness and tranquility upon them and he rewarded them with a near victory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared his pleasure for all those who were with Rasulullah in Hudaybiyah and who gave him their bayah under the tree which we know as Baytul Ridwan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them all except the owner of the red camel who did not give his bayah. Rasulullah took the bayah on behalf of Sayyidina Usman ibn Affan anhu, who he had sent to Makkah as his envoy and so he also in, so he is uh, also included in this list of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with. The accusation of those who blame Sayyidina Usman in this matter is false. We deny that and we declare this accusation to be false. As a matter of fact, Rasulullah took one hand, he said, this is the hand of Usman and he said, this is my hand. He put it like this and he took the bayah on behalf of Usman ibn Affan. So if you think about that, the bayah of Usman ibn Affan anhu was superior to the bayah of everybody else because in the case of the bayah of Usman anhu, both the hands belonged actually to the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from all false arguments and their uh, and, and, and the disrespect uh, that uh, goes with these false arguments. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said about those who gave their pledge to Rasulullah again by Tur Ridwan and this is, uh, these are very important things to, uh, to understand and to know about these things. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned by Tur Ridwan again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Fatha again, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايِعُونَكَ إِنَّمَا يُبَايِعُونَ اللَّهِ يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ فَمَنْ نَكَثَا فَإِنَّمَا يَنْكُثُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِمَا أَحَضَى عَلَيْهُ اللَّهَ فَسَيُؤْتِيهِ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Allah said surely those who pledge allegiance to you, O Muhammad Wasallam, are actually pledging allegiance to Allah. Allah's hand is over theirs. Whoever breaks their pledge, it will only be to their own loss. And whoever fulfills their pledge to Allah, he will grant them a great reward. Now, please make understand that this does not mean that the Nabi of Allah is Allah or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is equating uh, himself with the Nabi. The Nabi is the Nabi, Allah is Allah. Allah is saying that this pledge is so important and that this pledge was done as actually made because he said this is because the pledge is done at the order of Allah and by the order of Allah Rasulullah is taking the pledge so therefore the people are pledging allegiance directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's hand is over theirs now this means that the authority the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, confirmation of the uh, position of the Sahaba uh, is reiterated and is reinforced now, Rasulullah made this dua frequently. Ya Mukallib al Qulub, Qulubi wal Absar, Sabbit Qulubana ala dinik. He said, Oh, the one who changes the hearts, make our hearts steadfast in Islam. Now, in Islam, the Qalb, uh, in Arabic, Qalb means something that turns upside down, that is not steadfast on any one thing, goes from here to there. Therefore, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our faith firm. We have the du'a of the Quran as well. Rabbana, uh, Rabbana, uh, Rabbana, la tuzik qulubana. Rabbana, la tuzik qulubana. Ba'da iz hadaytana wa hablana. Uh, do not allow our hearts to go astray after we have been guided. So this is a very important dua for us to learn and do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from all trials of faith and to protect our iman and to take us in a state of iman when our time comes to meet him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the difficulties that the Sahaba endured for the sake of their deen. And he praised them for it and he called them the truthful ones. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them the truthful ones. Um, and promised his mercy. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised especially uh, those who helped the people who migrated, those who helped the uh, Sahaba who migrated uh, to Medina um, to save their religion and shared from whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them. Now this has special relevance today in view of the crisis that we are facing of refugees or Muslim refugees from different countries who are coming uh, to the countries where Muslims live. Some of those countries are uh, Muslim countries, some of them are not Muslim countries, but uh, the people coming uh, to those people and to those countries are all Muslim. And so therefore, even if the country is not Muslim, uh, it devolves upon the Muslims to do something for their brothers and sisters. And so therefore, we need to see what did the Sahaba do? Uh, what did the Ansar do and how did they do it? Uh, so that we learn from that and we benefit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Lil Fukara il Muhajirin Alladina Ukriju min diari himwa amwalihim Yabutawuna Fadlam min Allahi wa Rizwana wa Yansuna Allah wa Rasulahu Ula ika humus sadiqun Ula Walladina Tabaru Dara Wal Imana من قبلهم يحبون من هاجر إليهم ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصا ومن يقشح نفسي فأولئك هم المفلحون الله سبحانه وتعالى said in which means and there is also a share in this booty for the poor immigrants who were expelled from their homes and their property, seeking bounties from Allah and to please Him and helping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning helping Islam and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Such are indeed the truthful and those who before them had homes in al Madina and had adopted the faith, they had come into Islam, love those who emigrate to them and have no jealousy in their breasts, in their hearts for that which they have been given, which is the bounty, a booty of Banu Nadir, and give them the Muhajirun preference over themselves, even though they were in need of that. So these people, even though they needed that, uh, but they gave preference to the, uh, to the emigrants, to the, uh, to, the, to the Muhajirun who came from Mecca. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bearing witness for that. And then Allah said, And whosoever is saved from his own greed, such are they who will be uh, successful. Um, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the dua that the Sahaba made and what a uh, beautiful and wonderful dua that is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِيَخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَوْفٌ رَحِيمٌ And Allah said this beautiful dua, the meaning of which is that those who came after them say, O oh, our Rabb, forgive us and our brethren who have preceded us in faith. And do not put in our hearts any hatred against those who have believed. Our Rabb, you are indeed full of kindness and most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the courage and commitment of the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhi wa When he mentioned the behavior of the Sahaba in Ghazwatul Ahzab, uh, in the battle of the uh, trench, Ghazwatul Ahzab, the battle of Khandaq, and Allah said, وَلَمَّا رَأَى الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَهَزَابَ قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِيمَانًا وَتَسْلِمًا مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالٌ صَدَقُوا مَا أَحَدُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى نَحْبَهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرْ وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that when the believers saw the al ahzab the confederates, they said this is what Allah and his messenger Muhammad had promised us. 
and Allah and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had spoken the truth and it is and this seeing of this enormous or apparently overwhelming force only added to their faith and to their submissiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah says among the believers are men who have been true to their covenant with Allah they stood firm um, against the enemies of Islam of them some have fulfilled their obligations which means that they were martyred and some of them are still waiting but they have never changed meaning that they, were, they did not renege on their covenant with Allah in the least imagine Allah is their witness witness of their faithfulness as people who uh, were the best of the best of the Muslims that's why I refer to them uh, as the uh, the best generation uh, and, and as the gold standard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentioned the behavior of the Sahaba and praised it and he said Muhammadur Rasulullah Walladheena ma'ahu wa shiddahu ala al-kuffari ruhamahu baynahum tarahum rukaan sujjada rukaan sujjada yabtaguna fadlam min Allahi wa ridwana seemahum fi wujuhihim min athari sujood ذلك مثلهم في التوراة ومثلهم في الإنجيل كزرع أخرج شأه شطعه فآذره فاستغرض فاستوى على سوقه يعجب الزراء ليغيظ بهم الكفار وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة منهم مغفرة وعجرا عظيما. الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد بجمين زوت الفتح محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد الرسول الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم is the messenger of Allah and those who are with him they are severe against the disbelievers meaning against their enemies and merciful among themselves you see them bowing which is ruku and falling prostrate which is sujood in, in Salah seeking bounty from Allah and his good pleasure the mark of them that is the mark of their faith is on their faces the foreheads uh, from the traces of their prostration of their sujood during their Salah this is their description in the Torah but their description in the Injil uh, is like a sown seed which sends forth its shoot then makes it strong it then becomes thick and it stands straight on its stem delighting the sowers the farmers that he may enrage the disbelievers with them Allah has promised those among them who believe and do righteous deeds forgiveness and a mighty reward we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us those who uh, love the Sahaba who emulate the Sahaba who try to be as much like the Sahaba as they can uh, in today's world no matter where they live uh, no matter which country and so on uh, and they do that because of their love for the companions and the family of Rasulullah uh, it's a, as, I mentioned, as I mentioned to you before it's a matter of uh, for us it's a matter of creed uh, for us it's a matter of creed for us it's a matter of uh, you know being uh, uh, true to uh, to our uh, faith uh, that we respect those from whom we got the faith which is absolutely critical that we uh, that we understand this because if you do not respect those from whom you got your faith, then you have no faith. It's a very important thing for us because we get, you know, uh, sort of uh, inundated with all kinds of... Today, the uh, big, big issue is not lack of information. It is uh, a surfeit of information. Uh, just too many uh, things and too many... Too many, too many problems um, 
and too much confusion uh, all because we do not stick uh, to the straight and narrow which is what Rasulullah has taught us. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to do, to do that which is pleasing to him and to save us from that which does not please him. Um, inshallah there is a the second part of the Aqid of the Saham I want to speak specifically about our mother uh, um, uh, Ummuna uh, Sayyid, Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha our mother Aisha radiallahu anha because uh, there are people who uh, malign her and who blame her and so forth and she has even among the Sahaba she has a very very special place and what that place is and why that is so important to understand that and to respect her and to make sure absolutely that we do not ever say anything which uh, seems to cast any aspersion on her uh, why that is important and why that is so serious because if we do that then quite literally we exit Islam, we cease to be Muslims, we become kuffar, we become people who have denied and therefore we don't want to, we don't want to be there. So this is something inshallah, next session we will talk about that.